Hi everybody! Today we're going to talk about stigma and DID and why it's important to raise awareness. As I've mentioned in a previous video, there's a lot of stigma surrounding dissociative identity disorder. And if you don't know what that is, you can always just look it up on the internet. It's the same thing as multiple personality disorder, an out of date term. So just look that up and come right back. Dissociative identity disorder is so stigmatized that even doctors in the psychiatric community don't believe it's a real disorder. I understand why they might not feel it's a real disorder, because I once believed that too. I no longer have that luxury, because I have the disorder. I had it my whole life, but I used all kinds of justifications and reasoning to explain to myself why I didn't have it. It was very important to me to not have a disorder like that. Because in my mind, having dissociative identity disorder meant that I didn't have complete control over myself. And I have a lot of issues with control. If I had almost any other disorder, I would feel a lot more powerful. By that I mean that this disorder has amnesia attached to it. And that's my biggest fear, is that I will black out, wake up somewhere else, not know what I've done. And I've had those instances in my life many times. I blamed it on other things. Maybe I was too drunk, or maybe I was more tired than I thought. Maybe I was just too busy. Like I said before, I understand why lay people might not think this disorder exists. To a lay person who does not have the disorder, it might seem like a quite fantastical disorder. Why would a person think they were a ghost? Or in my case, I have a part who is a wolf building who moves like water. Let me explain that. So he's a wolf, but he's the size of a skyscraper, and he also has rooms like a skyscraper, and he moves like a tidal wave. I tried to change some of those traits about him, but I can't change things like that. That's just the way they are, because a child's brain created some of these parts. And so this is the kind of thing a child would come up with. They would say, oh, a big wolf the size of a skyscraper that moves like a tidal wave. Three very scary things to a child and a great defense mechanism, if you can imagine it. My brain created that to protect me from whatever it was that was happening in that time. I needed a wolf the size of a skyscraper that moved like a tidal wave to protect me. So my child's brain created that, and I'm very grateful for it. Because without that, I might not be here right now, okay? I don't know if I would have made it had I been able, capable of remembering all of my trauma. But see, that's one of the fantastical aspects that makes a doctor or somebody who doesn't have the disorder think, well, that's insane. That's cosplay. That's just somebody making it up. How I wish DID was just a cosplay, because then I could control when I do it, uh, where I do it, who this happens in front of. I don't have any of those options. I could be in the middle of my PhD uh, presentation and I can't say that a, my three-year-old part won't come out and ask for a Sunday. I think it would be unlikely because that's not a safe situation for them to come out, but if there was a triggering trauma, that could happen. It is not fun to think that that can happen. Imagine if it were you. Would you like to think that at any important point in your life, you as a toddler could come forward and just stun everybody? That's scary. That's not fun. That's not cosplay. So I would just hope that people would consider being open-minded about this disorder. Another thing I've noticed is they say if somebody comes on YouTube claiming to have DID, that they're probably lying because they want attention. The evidence for wanting that attention is the videos themselves. I started making videos because I really need community. I need to be able to communicate with people as well as teach people about my journey. I kind of want to be a case study. 
I want somebody to be able to look and, and at my story and either say, oh my God, I identify and I don't feel alone. Or a professor, a psychologist, a psychiatrist could use it for research. I just really need to raise awareness, especially now that I actually understand my symptoms more. I can say for certain that had I realized that I had this disorder fully, had I realized it, had I believed the doctors who said I did have it and not the doctors who said I didn't have it, that it wasn't real, that it was my imagination, that I was attention seeking, that I, whatever, whatever, I was being manipulated. Had I not believed them, had I not been so eager to be seen as credible, as not a liar, as not a manipulator, that I said, okay, you must be right. I must be seeking attention. I must want this. So I won't be doing that anymore. And I suppressed my parts for years. This idea that I could be different people, that I could lose control. I'd spent my whole life trying to illustrate to people that I had self-control. So this is the opposite of what I wanted, but self-control and DID are a different topic that we'll talk about later. So I just kind of want to express that to you so you could see why I understand why people wouldn't believe in this disorder. I didn't. I did not believe in it the same way I don't believe in a lot of things that I cannot prove. I say I mostly don't believe in it, but I don't know. Obviously it could exist, but I mostly did not believe in the disorder. Imagine my surprise when Lola showed up in the shower and said, hey girl, guess what? We're here. We've been here for a long time. Uh, you can no longer deny us. Yeah just like that. And my brain immediately lock, 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 lock all these instances, like I said in my first video, locked into place. It felt right. It was the first diagnosis that felt right. And what does stigma have to do with all of this? Stigma is what tells people that this disorder does not exist. It feeds into a pathology I already have, which is to deny the existence of this disorder. I have that strongly within me. I have parts who tell me this disorder is not real. I have parts who tell me I don't have this disorder. Ironically, they don't realize that them telling me that makes it reinforces the fact that I do. <laughs> I read an article yesterday by Alan J. Francis, MD. He was one of the, basically an editor for the DSM-5. I actually own one of his books called Saving Normal. I had no idea he didn't believe in dissociative identity disorder. And so I was reading his article, it's called Multiple Personality, Mental Disorder, Myth or Metaphor. And here is a quote from that article. He said he had seen hundreds of people with purported DID. And he said there was just basically one common denominator. And here is the verbatim quote. In every single instance, I discovered that the alternate personalities had been born under the tutelage of an enthusiastic and naive therapist, or an imitation of a friend, or after seeing a movie, or upon joining a multiples chat group or some combination. It was most commonly a case of a suggestible and gullible therapist, and a suggestible and gullible patient influencing each other in the creation of new personalities. None of the purported cases had had a spontaneous onset, and none was the least bit convincing. I had not seen a doctor in th a little less than three years. I was not on any mind-altering drugs. I was literally in my shower when my alters surfaced for the first time. This was not a case of being influenced or gullible or naive. Doctors had tried to tell me before. I said, no, you're wrong about this. Why? Because other doctors told me I am wrong about this. So how are people with DID supposed to figure out their disorder when they are stuck in this tug of war in psychiatry about whether or not it's real? I can tell you right now it's real. I can tell you because I suffer from it and I would not have believed it myself had I not suffered from it. That should not be required. Empathy is all that needs to be required to believe this diagnosis. I should not need hard evidence, though guess what? Hard evidence exists as they found that you can identify the structures of a person with DID, their brain, you can identify the structures of their brain, and you can see the difference between the brains of quote unquote healthy people. 
and a 73% chance that you can identify those things. That's a huge deal scientifically. How many psychiatric illnesses have any evidence? Hardcore scientific, you know, biological, physical evidence other than brain chemistry, which you can't see. I don't want to hear that it doesn't exist anymore. I am living it. And if you want to talk about it not existing, go talk to some other area of people. <laughs> because I believe that any doctor who does not believe in DID should lose their license. Could you imagine this article that I just read a quote from? Could you imagine if this article was about cancer? I know, shocking that I even suggested that, right? Offensive almost. Cancer kills people, Brandy. Don't you get that? So does DID. I am here by happenstance. I am here by luck and chance. Not for lack of trying not to be here. 70% of people with DID attempt suicide. This is a deadly disorder. There's little room for the kind of stigma a pe people with DID must endure on a daily basis within the psychiatric community, let alone the world. Speaking of stigma, by the way, there's two types of stigma, social stigma and self-stigma. Social stigma is sort of like external stigma from the outside. So, you know, self-stigma is internalized stigma, which is what I had. I had an extreme internalized stigma against dissociative identity disorder. And there's actually a scale in which you can measure your own Stigma, it's called the um, SSMIS, which is the self-stigma of mental illness scale. And so you can always go and look at that and see where you lie on that scale. It's like, that's how stigmatized it is. You need a scale for it. Why do we need a scale? <laughs> Why can't people just believe our symptoms? It's had somebody believed my symptoms earlier than the doctors who didn't believe in the disorder, then I would have probably realized I had it and I would have had, I would have lived a different life. I probably would have had a lot more opportunities because I probably could have stayed in school. But there's one instance of how my life was affected. But that's where I'm at. That's why I'm here. I'm here to share my journey, to maybe even act as a case study, um, to educate and to make others with DID not feel alone. There's almost no other disorder that needs more awareness and destigmatization than dissociative identity disorder. Just think about the first thing you think about when you hear about MPD or DID. Is it split? Is it Sybil? That's called stigma. And that's why I'm here to raise awareness. Thank you all for watching my video and please subscribe or comment if you want to. You, you know. Um, I appreciate it, and I love y'all. <laughs> okay, bye.